welcome to Comic Tropes. I'm your host, Chris. There is a question I have asked myself many times as a comic book reader, and that is, why aren't there more Jewish superheroes? Because when you look at the history of comic books, from the 30s through the 60s, every key character in superhero comics was created by a Jewish creator. Everything in the Silver Age and Golden Age is by Jewish talent, and yet none of those superheroes are Jewish. So why is that? Well, today we're going to try to get some answers there. And I won't have a lot in the way of a definitive answer because I can't find any interviews where the creators themselves were asked this question point blank. But we can look at the history of comics, the history of America, a few anecdotal pieces of uh, interviews by some of this talent, and we can try to fashion our best guess. Uh, now, before we go any further, I think we should level set by establishing who are some of these key characters I'm talking about and the, the sort of big moments in comic book history that were created by Jewish talent. So we're going to get into that, and unless I specifically mention otherwise, you should assume that every writer, artist, editor, and publisher that I'm going to mention was Jewish. We should begin by noting that the first comic books came out in the 1930s and they were published by a guy named Max Gaines. He began reprinting comic strips from newspapers in what we now recognize as the comic book format. Max established Entertainment Comics, or EC Comics, and his son, Bill, later inherited it and changed it to Entertaining Comics. That became popular throughout the 40s and the 50s with books like Tales from the Crypt. When the Comics Code and government pressure made horror unpopular, he changed his popular comedy comic, Mad, to a magazine to avoid regulation. Mad is still published today and has long been a publication built by urban Jewish cartoonists. Max's early funny comics reprints were massively popular, and many rival publishers sprouted up, many of them also Jewish, because other creative fields in the 1930s were not readily available to Jewish people at the time due to a general anti-Semitism in the professional workplace. But by the mid-30s, a lot of the comic strips had already been reprinted and publishers were looking for new ideas, like war stories and science fiction. The first superhero comic, Superman, was published in 1938 and was created by writer Jerry Siegel and artist Joe Shuster. This ushered in the popularity of superheroes as the dominant genre in comics. It was quickly followed by Batman, by writer Bob Kane and artist Bill Finger. In 1940, The Spirit was created by Will Eisner. Another important character created at this time was Captain America in 1941 by writer Joe Simon and artist Jack Kirby. We'll come back to discuss these characters and their creators in greater detail, but there are some more key milestones set by Jewish creators that we should look at. In 1956, DC introduced a new version of The Flash, Barry Allen, which represents the start of the Silver Age of comics. He was created by writer Robert Kaniger and artist Carmine Infantino, who was not Jewish. But editor Julius Julie Schwartz was, and he had a hand in the creation. A massive amount of Flash's stories for the next decade were written by John Broome, also Jewish. In 1961, the team of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee began the Marvel Age of Comics with the creation of the Fantastic Four. The two Jewish creators went on to co-create Thor, the X-Men, the Hulk, Nick Fury, Black Panther, The Inhumans, Iron Man, and many more. In 1976, Chris Claremont began writing X-Men. In addition to being Jewish, he created Kitty Pride, a Jewish member of the X-Men, and revealed that Magneto was a Holocaust survivor, explaining his hatred for humanity. In 1978, Will Eisner published what most consider to be the first graphic novel, A Contract with God. In 1980, Art Spiegelman began publishing Raw Magazine, featuring the work of many Jewish cartoonists and the first chapters of Mouse. Spiegelman was among other Jewish creators like Trina Robbins and Harvey Picard that kept the underground comics movement that was prominent through the late 60s and 70s going. 
Spiegelman's Mouse was eventually published in 1986 as a graphic novel and was Spiegelman's account of his family's escape from Nazi Germany, which would go on to win a Pulitzer Prize. In 1988, Jewish writer Neil Gaiman began his acclaimed run on Sandman, which would occasionally address themes related to Judaism and Kabbalah, or Jewish mysticism. And on top of all that, we had prominent Jewish publishers of comics like Harry Donenfeld and Jack Leibowitz of DC Comics, and Martin Goodman of Timely, which ultimately became Marvel. It was Jewish fans that organized the first comic book conventions. And there have been many prominent Jewish directors who oversaw some of the biggest superhero movies, like Superman director Richard Donner, Spider-Man Sam Raimi, and X-Men's Bryan Singer. So now that we've established some of the most prominent characters and their creators, we're still left with the question, why didn't they feel the need to make any of these characters Jewish? And to answer that question, we're going to have to look at overall American history at the time. So why, first of all, were so many Jewish people working in comic books? Well, that's because a lot of creative avenues were closed off to them. Newspapers and radio businesses were simply anti-Semitic. Ad agencies in the 30s and 40s frequently had anti-Semitic quotas to prevent too many Jewish people from working there. So you had teenagers that were the children of first-generation immigrants, just coming out of the Great Depression, struggling to put their creative skills to use to escape poverty, and not many options. But comic books were new. Comic books were desperate for new material. Comic books became a welcoming new option that was pioneered by Jewish creators. Now we have creators like Siegel and Schuster pitching Superman. But even though the comic book publishers were happy to work with them, American readers did not have an appetite for Jewish heroes or stories. And on top of that, people like Jack Kirby and Will Eisner saw themselves as Americans first and Jews second. The fact was, these people were all culturally Jewish, but they weren't necessarily orthodox or conservative. It wasn't that their religion wasn't important to them, but these people were coming from families who had sacrificed a lot to move to America for new opportunities and safety from Europe's wars. They wanted to assimilate. They wanted to be accepted. So it wasn't the time or the place to create a Jewish Batman or Captain America. Instead, their experiences would become coded into the creation of superheroes. Let's start with the harshest example. Jewish people then and now deal with competing stereotypes. One is that they are weak and ineffective, and the other is that they somehow have the power to control the world behind the scenes. Conscious decision or not, this idea seems to be present in many superheroes. Clark Kent walks around as a mild-mannered reporter, but as Superman is more powerful than anyone. Steve Rogers was a sickly weakling before being transformed into Captain America. It's a trope of superheroes in general. Peter Parker, Bruce Banner, and Tony Stark are all men of science with passive demeanors or serious injuries, but are secretly powerful beings that can reshape the world around them. Some parts of the Jewish experience may or may not have been intentionally added. For instance, Superman is sent away from the dying planet of Krypton to Earth. Was that a mirror of Siegel and Schuster's parents leaving Eastern Europe for the Western world? Was it a thinly veiled parable like Moses being sent down the river by his mother? Maybe, maybe not. Simon and Kirby have Captain America punching Hitler on the cover of his comic. But in 1940, America was largely unaware of the extent of the Nazis' atrocities and how many millions of Jews were being killed. There were rumors, and there was a large amount of anger at Hitler and his army for the war that they were spreading, but that was an American thing in general in 1940. Still, it's possible rumors from European family members or familiarity with the Old Testament could have informed some of these creators when making new superheroes. One popular theory is that Superman is an evolution of the Jewish concept of the Golem. The Golem is more of a monster, but is also a protector of the Jews. It isn't a perfect fit for Superman, but Will Eisner has said in interviews that he believes it was a conscious derivation. Over two decades later, Lee and Kirby created Benjamin Jacob Grimm, The Thing, a powerful rock monster and a member of the Fantastic Four. 
This is a much more similar idea to the Gollum, and yet, Lee and Kirby weren't explicit about things' religious background, and it wasn't until 2002 that writer Carl Kessel made it canon that Thing was, in fact, raised Jewish. One element that plays strongly in many superhero stories is the idea of being an outsider. Especially many of the Marvel superheroes like Spider-Man, Hulk, and the X-Men feel like they aren't quite accepted by society. And the men behind these characters certainly had to deal with those feelings as they worked to assimilate into modern America. It's a bonus that many teenagers have the same feelings, which made them relate to the stories and become loyal fans. In Danny Fingeroth's book, he argues that the very concept of a secret identity, which is a trope for superheroes, probably came from the Jewish creators feeling the need to play different types of roles in different circumstances. One at home, one at work, one out in public. Ultimately, it's my belief that Jewish creators didn't feel the need to make their superheroes Jewish because they were trying to assimilate. However, that means that today there are very few prominent Jewish superheroes. Even when a Jewish actor plays a superhero on screen, their Jewishness is invisible. For instance, Scarlett Johansson and John Bernthal are Jewish, but Black Widow and Punisher certainly aren't. There are prominent Catholic heroes like Daredevil or Muslim superheroes like Miss Marvel. But, quite ironically, Jewish characters remain very quiet in the comics. In closing, I can only think of two prominent Jewish superheroes. I can think of The Flash and The Thing. And both of those are relatively recent developments. Uh, Barry Allen was hinted at being Jewish around 1988. And The Thing wasn't canonically Jewish until 2002. So, it really makes you wonder, okay, comic books, the comic book industry, and superheroes in general, there's no question that that was all created by Jewish creators. They had the biggest hand in all of this. They built it, and yet, there's very little in the way of representation for them now, today. It may be time for us to honestly take a fresh look at superheroes and reconsider what kind of place and representation Jewish people have in superhero stories. I hope you enjoyed this look at a historically interesting part of comic books. I know it's not as jokey and funny as some of my episodes, but uh, it was something I really wanted to dig into and um, couldn't find much in the way of definitive answers, but I definitely found out that there's no question that these creators were growing up in anti-Semitic times. So it just wasn't a popular environment for them to say, oh yeah, Captain America happens to be Jewish, Batman happens to be Jewish. It was an interesting uh, topic to look at. Uh, I am on vacation for the next two weeks. I'm going to Japan and Hong Kong, but I've prepared ahead. I've got uh, two really ridiculous episodes in a row for you, and if you are one of my patrons on Patreon, I've actually also created exclusive episodes for those two weeks for my patrons. So yeah, I've created a backlog of episodes getting ready for this trip. Uh, please, if you haven't, please consider taking a look at my Patreon. Uh, we also have polls, I have blog posts, things like that that are exclusive, and you can become a supporter for as low as $1. It would really help me, especially in situations like this where I'm going on a trip, uh, you know, if I want to spend some money on a comic book abroad or record over there. Uh, it all goes into production of the show. Just something uh, I hope you'll uh, consider, but I really appreciate you tuning in for this episode. Mm, that makes me sound old. Tuning in. Nobody tunes in anymore, do they? We, we, we tap buttons, we type. We don't tune anything anymore. All right, so I'm ending this episode feeling very old, but you know what? Until next week, keep reading comics.